In this video, we're going to look at another example of finding the slope of a secant line between two given x values for a given function. The last question that we looked at was a bit more numerical in nature. The reason I say that is because our given x values here are just arbitrary points on the graph. So instead of coming down to maybe one number for each f of x value that we're going to find and evaluate, what we're going to end up returning is an algebraic expression we're still going to follow the same process of plug in the given x values into our function, find our f of x values, and then use this formula here, this slope of our secant, to figure out what the slope of our secant line is. But what's going to happen is it's not going to be numbers, it's going to be more of an expression that we find. And in the last video, we looked at what maybe values could return an undefined answer or be an undefined value because we we're dealing with a rational function. Here we're dealing with a quadratic, and we know by the nature of a quadratic that any real x that we evaluate is going to be on the graph that we have. Our graph exists for all x's, that's the domain of a quadratic. So we're not really going to have any issues there, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start evaluating. So we called f of x1 as f of c, so f of c is c squared plus 10. Since this is a variable, this is a number, we can't really combine them in any form or fashion, so we're left with c squared plus 10. Okay, easy enough. So now let's look at f of x2. So f of x2 is actually f of c plus h. So instead of x, we write c plus h. We square that sum, plus 10. So if we have this sum squared, what we're looking at is the product of two binomials. So when we look at multiplying binomials like this, we're going to use the commonly known acronym of FOIL, which is first, outer, inner, last. So what we're going to have is first times first is c squared. Our outer is going to be c times h, so we have plus ch. The same thing for our inner term, because we get c times h. Then we get h times h, which is h squared. So what we get is c squared plus 2ch plus h squared, and this is what the product of our, bin of our two binomials were, but we can't forget the plus 10 on the end. So now we have this. So f of c plus h returns this. So we have our two x values, we have our two f of x values. Let's plug them into the slope of our secant formula and figure out what the slope of our secant line between these two points are. So m secant is f of x1 we found to be c squared plus 10 and we're going to subtract f of x2 which we found to be this so we have minus the entire expression c squared plus 2ch plus h squared plus 10 close parentheses all over c which is our x1 minus parentheses c plus h because we're subtracting this whole expression here so now what our first step is going to be is distributing these two subtraction signs into our parentheses. So what we have is c squared plus 10 on the top, minus c squared, minus 2ch, minus h squared, minus 10, all over c minus c minus h. So let's go through the numerator first and see what we can cancel out here. And what I mean by cancel is, in this case, we're going to be subtracting c squared minus c squared, we know that leaves us with 0, so we can leave those terms off. And we also get 10 minus 10. So we have some things there that we got rid of. And in the bottom, we have the same thing with c minus c. So this kind of simplifies down nicely to give us negative 2ch minus h squared over minus h. Okay, so let's look and see what else we can do to simplify this a little bit. We see that each term here, because this... This negative 2ch is one term because it's the product of a couple of different things. Then we have minus h squared, which is an h times an h, over a negative h. They all have a negative h in common. So let's factor out a negative h out of the top and see what we're left with. So if we factor out a negative h out of this first term, we're left with 2c. And out of the last term, we're left with plus h. And in the bottom, we leave the negative h alone. But since this is negative h times something else over a negative h, we can divide those two things out because they appear in the numerator and denominator of our fraction. So they cancel each other out. And all we're left with for the slope of our secant line 
is 2C plus H.